take a look at this scene. Panoramic views, vivid greenery, grazing livestock, long stretches of pine trees, and piles and piles of discarded waste. This is Masaka in South Uganda, an evidence of the growing challenge presented by plastic and waste management in a developing country. Plastic is obviously not just Uganda's problem, but here with minimal official waste management systems, that problem is far more present in day-to-day -day life. But with plastic embedded in the global economy and a growing middle class, how does a country like Uganda begin to address this problem when even in the developed world we are struggling with the plastic epidemic? Pine Ridge, which is one of the most striking parts of the course. On each year I've been there, there have been these piles of rubbish, mainly plastics. I've been told that over the last year it's got far worse. It's become the unofficial dumping ground of the municipality. So I'm going up now to have a look. Right, I think it is this way. This is it. As I've been told, it is so much worse than it was. You'll find piles of rubbish in the middle of town burning in raw daylight because there's nothing else they can do with them. There's no, there's no system to get rid of it. And so it ends up now piling up in places like that. 95% is burnt illegally at landfill. The pollution that creates is, is massive. What is needed is circular economies in not just in Uganda but in countries as a whole as those countries that traditionally brought waste and allowed waste to pile into them like China, like India are pulling out of that market. We're creating one here in Masaka that is all designed within Uganda and it will be a replica model that we can take not just across Uganda but across Africa as a whole. EcoBricks' solution starts with cleaning up the plastic waste from the local communities. This is achieved through a central hub and multiple satellite collection sites around the community, one of which I visited during its construction to see firsthand. This is how it works. So Mr. Semakula is going to buy plastic from the community and make sure that after his site is full of plastic, he has two options. Either he delivers the plastic to us or we come and pick it from him. He buys it at 350, then sells it to us at 450 shillings. Before they had even completed building the collection site, word began to spread. We are having already members of the community delivering plastic, and we're going to pay them instantly. What happens to this plastic next? Here we are now at the EcoBricks primary collection site. This is where all the plastic is gathered and then sold on to Kampala to be recycled, but also where they are developing what will be a factory in itself to process this plastic into what they can use to create these eco bricks. A brick that is stronger than concrete that utilizes both polythene bags, butters and sand. The prototype is done, certified by uh, an ISO laboratory. In our product we need plenty of plastic, so that means to have enough plastic we have to create more satellite collection sites that can feed us with plastic. So I have here one of the 
pavers that Nicholas described, a load of these will slot together to make a variety of services. With each eco brick using 21 plastic bottles to produce, imagine if surfaces like this were to begin using these eco pavers instead of concrete. So this machine will do 13,400 pavers a month. It's going to create about 30 full-time jobs and allow us to increase our plastic collection from 15 tonnes to 30 tonnes a month. Their current initiative is incentivising the short-term cleanup. But how do we begin to reduce the long-term plastic consumption in the first place? The reduce element, I think, has to come through education, and that is a slow burner, but it is something we're committed to doing. We still have our educational programmes and we have eco clubs that we are establishing across schools in Masaka. We ensure that the next generation is knowing about the dangers of plastic. If we can create those circular economies that add value and keep adding value to plastic in the community, that is when people will give it to us because they earn money for it and people will get an end product which is our plastic pavers and bricks. Education takes generations and generations and generations to really have an impact. And motivation through cash is something that can be learned very quickly. That is what we're doing here and we're not the only ones doing it. It's a system that people are really adopting across Uganda and is proven very effective. Plastic is a global issue that we don't have an easy or quick solution for. But EcoBrick stands as one example of the potential to create value and demand for what has previously been discarded without thought. And in doing so, take the first steps in reshaping our linear disposable economy into a circular and regenerative one. Thank you so much for watching. Glass Passports is a new documentary series I've just launched and the idea being to explore various short stories like that both at home and abroad and now working on where I can go and what I can cover for series two so if you'd like to catch up when it comes out you can subscribe or find me on Instagram below and I'm also going to put the first episode from this season from Uganda that will appear below me somewhere for you to watch there thank you again and uh, see you next time I suppose <laughs>